Good morning. Good morning po. And uh, we welcome everyone. At uh, we are thankful for uh, our technology that we can be together even uh, through online. For our uh, new friends or uh, those who are new in the church, the JIO State of Qatar is uh, under reorganization. And so uh, uh, the supervising pastor uh, is right here in the Philippines. But uh, this November, praise God, because of the prayers, because of the tears, because of the many intercessions that people are uh, doing, finally, we can meet together in person. So uh, on uh, November 3, up to December 17, we will be there in Qatar to celebrate the faithfulness of God. So uh, I would like to thank everyone uh, who worked hard for me to visit and my wife to visit the state of Qatar and uh, this World Cup, the FIFA World Cup is not an accident. <laughs> and uh, this is uh, our way to, uh, to visit Qatar. And uh, hopefully uh, we can be together. We would like to welcome uh, our new friends, our visitors from uh, of uh, JIL Qatar, now working in Qatar, Sister Karen Gamboa, uh, Sister Donna Rose Alaska. Are you from uh, Isabella? Donna Rose, I have a friend in uh, Alaska. Uh, our caretaker before in Kalokan is Alaska, uh, Brother Terry. Anyway, Tertia. Uh, and then Mark Anthony, welcome to JIL and Brother Richard. And Brother Eric, uh, are this the one from Kenya? So uh, welcome, welcome to JIL State of Qatar. And today is the first, the first Friday of August. So uh, we will have our communion service later. If you are, uh, if you are at home uh, so far, we have 43 onliners. Uh, including me uh, in this uh, online service and 121 uh, in our face-to-face -face or in-person fellowship. It is better to have a face-to-face -face gathering rather than the online service. And uh, today being the first uh, uh, Friday and uh, of August, and uh, due to uh, insistent public demand, uh, the clamor to have our afternoon service uh, to, today also at 1 to 3 p.m., we have our afternoon service. So beginning August, we, uh, we have two services, one in the morning uh, at 9 a.m. and uh, later at 1 p.m. So. Uh, if your friends is has a, uh, a morning shift in their work, they can attend our afternoon service. Now we have uh, two choices, morning and afternoon. So uh, if you are in need of, uh, of transportation or uh, Brother Anthony is one of our uh, coordinators, uh, and uh, heading the transport group, the transporter. Maybe he is a friend of Jason uh, Statham because he is also a tran transporter. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, you can coordinate with him if, if in case uh, you need to go to Altomama, our uh, uh, house of prayer, house of uh, praise. So uh, thank you for joining us and today, being uh, the first Friday of the month, we have a new a monthly theme, uh, A Courageous Hope, because we are uh, confessing the Lord is with us. I will not be afraid. Psalm 118, verse 6, 
uh, the Lord is with me, I will not be afraid. David uh, said in Psalm 23, verse uh, 4, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Remember that, brother, uh, brethren, I will fear no evil because God is with us, Emmanuel. Many are afraid to drive because, uh, because of fear. They never learn to drive because of fear. They never learn how to, how to swim because of the fear of the waters. They are afraid to drown. They are afraid to ride a bike because of fear. And today, we will learn how to conquer our fear and have the God kind of courage. Courage. So, uh, at, uh, others, alam nyo, yung iba, matapang gumawa ng kasalanan. Others are not afraid to sin. Because uh, in America, there are so many shooting sprees. A, a guy will go to the mall or maybe to Walmart or maybe to the school and, uh, and shoot people at will. They are not afraid to, uh, to commit murder, to kill people. That is not the God kind of courage that we will talk about. Others are uh, not afraid to, uh, to violate the rules of traffic. Even though uh, there is a one way, they will uh, counter flow. Or uh, so these are misplaced, misplaced kind of courage. If uh, we will, if we want to please God, we need to display the God's kind of courage. Okay. So uh, what do you mean by courage? Courage means the ability to do something that frightens one. The ability to do something that frightens you and me. When I was studying how to drive back in 1989, and uh, the, the, the driving school, my instructor in driving, uh, as I immediately started the engine of the car, uh, instructed me to move forward uh, and then drive in the, and drive in a busy street and uh, and so I was so my uh, I am persp perspiring profusely nanlalamig ako sa pawis na kinakabahan natatakot pagkatapos na I am fearful to uh, to commit uh, to, uh, to crash maybe, makabangga, o makabundol ng tao. So, uh, uh, courage uh, uh, is absent at the time. I am full of fear. And, uh, and so we need the, the God's kind of courage to do what is right. The strength in the face of pain and grief. The strength in the face of pain and grief. And I... Uh, would like to congratulate those, uh, even those who are uh, whose loved ones died because of COVID, and yet they are they started to move on. That is courage to move forward. Courage is also a, a mental and moral strength to persevere, to withstand danger, fear, or difficulty. If we have mental strength, if we have moral strength, therefore, there is no need to be afraid. You know, uh, others, if you assign them to pray during the service because of fear of people, the fear of the feedback, the fear of committing mistakes, they don't want to pray publicly. They don't want to sing publicly because they are afraid uh, of what, will, what people will say. But you know, they were, uh, if you will entertain fear in your life, you will not enjoy the beauty of the waters. 
if you are uh, diving in Mindoro or maybe if you have rich in the Philippines in Boracay, wow, that's the beauty of the underwater. You can, uh, you can feed the fish in your hand in, uh, uh, in uh, Puerto Princesa, Palawan. I was assigned there in Palawan and I saw the beauty of the underwater, more beautiful from the many birds in the sky. It's good to see the corals. It's, it is good, it is better to feed the fish in your hand. They are not afraid. So uh, uh, if you can conquer your fear of diving or maybe flying, you know, many are don't want to go abroad. They are afraid of the uh, riding the airplane. But uh, we thank the Lord. Uh, you flew to Qatar and now you are working there. Anyway, the quality of mind and spirit that enables a person to face difficulty, to face danger, to face pain without fear. Others, they are afraid to, uh, to have their vaccine. They are afraid of injection. <laughs> they are afraid of, uh, of injection and they are not afraid to be exposed to COVID. It is better to be vaccinated, to have work, to, for you to, be, to enter restaurant. It is better to be vaccinated. So uh, courage is fearlessness. And so when you talk about courage, who is the person that will come first to your mind? Maybe David, because David fought Goliath and he won. Maybe Daniel. Because Daniel was not afraid to go to the lion's den. He was not afraid to, uh, to rebuke King Nebuchadnezzar at the time. Or maybe Joshua, he crossed the Jordan River and uh, went to Jericho and he led the, the fall of Jericho. Those people are known for their courage. Among the women, Maybe Esther, because Esther uh, said the famous word, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. If I perish, I perish. But because of the courage of uh, Esther, the Jew in, uh, in their place in Babylon, or now Iraq, was not uh, annihilated were not killed. Why? Because of the courage of Esther. Uh, well, in the New Testament, Mary Magdalene is full of courage. While uh, the other disciples uh, went, uh, were scattered, but when Jesus died, it was Mary Magdalene who first visited the tomb. The first witness of the resurrection is a woman. So uh, we thank the Lord for women who are witnessing uh, to unbelievers. Uh, others, uh, you, you know, who have displayed, displayed courage. But today, I chose uh, not uh, David. I chose not uh, Daniel and Joshua. Today, I choose Nathan. Nathan, who displayed the God's kind of courage. Why? Who is Nathan? Sino ba yung Nathan na yan? Nathan is a Hebrew name meaning the gift of God. Is there someone in our uh, congregation named Nathan? Well, uh, your name means gift of God. You are a gift of God to people. You are a gift of God to your family. It is wrong to think that you are a curse, you are a jinx, uh, malaska. No, that is a lie because uh, you are a gift of God. All of us are uh, a gift from the Lord. Children are a gift from the Lord. Psalm 127 verse 3, we are all uh, children in the sight of God. God is looking for a childlike faith. 
And so all of us are a gift from the Lord. Okay. Uh, Nathan is a prophet during the time of King David. He is an advisor. That is why uh, we will learn so many things about him. Uh, Nathan as a prophet was mentioned four times in the Old Testament. Uh, there are others who are named uh, Nathan, but uh, we will just focus on the prophet Nathan. Prophet Nathan. In 2 Samuel chapter 7, David consulted uh, Nathan. In chapter 12 of the same book, 2 Samuel, Nathan rebuked King David. That is the kind of courage that Nathan displayed. It's hard to confront a person of authority just like David. And so uh, Nathan displayed courage. In uh, 1 Kings chapter 1, Nathan was very instrumental in making uh, Solomon king of Israel. And so uh, we are thankful for the life of uh, Nathan as a prophet and as a counselor, an advisor. In uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 3, verse 5, to honor uh, the prophet Nathan, David named one of his sons. Uh, this uh, couple, David and Bathsheba, honored Nathan. How? By naming their son, one of their sons are, is named uh, Nathan. So we are thankful because uh, David could have, uh, uh, in order to, con to forget about prophet Nathan for rebuking him, uh, could have killed Nate, the prophet, but uh, he did not uh, do it. He actually named one of his son Nathan. Okay, moving on. Uh, what is the uh, when is the first time that Nathan the prophet was mentioned? It was there in Second Samuel chapter seven, and uh, we can read. After the king was settled in his palace, the Lord had given him rest. It means that uh, David was so victorious at the time. And then in verse 2, and he said to Nathan the prophet, in 2 uh, Samuel chapter 7, Nathan is already a prophet. And it is uh, possible that he is one of the disciples of prophet Samuel. Samuel. So, uh, and he is already in the palace. We can read there that uh, 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 David consulted him. David said, here I am living in a house of Cedar while the ark of God remains in a tent. In, uh, in verse 4, uh, in verse 3, uh, Nathan said, Nathan replied to the king when he was consulted, whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it. Whatever you have in mind, ano man ang iyong plano, ano man ang nasa isip mo, gawin mo, the Lord is with you. That is what Nathan said to David. But... During the night, at night, while maybe before uh, Nathan sleeps, uh, the, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. And he said in verse 5 of 2 Samuel chapter 7, Go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord says, Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? It says there in verse 12, uh, when your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up uh, your offspring to succeed you. Uh, in verse 12, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish the kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom 
forever. What is the God kind of a God's kind of courage on the part of Nathan? He had the courage to correct himself. You know, uh, Nathan uh, counseled prematurely to David. Whatever is in your mind, do it. As a prophet, he could have consulted the Lord first. He could have prayed first. But uh, it's, it was good that the Lord took his attention. Tinawag ang pansin itong si, uh, si Nathan. Sabihin mo kay David. Hindi siya ang magpapatayo ng uh, tahanan, the house of the Lord, but Solomon. Uh, at uh, kung magmumug forward, eventually it was Jesus who uh, built the house of God. And so uh, because of the courage to correct himself on the part of David, he said to David, King David, you are not the one who will build the house, but Solomon. Why? Because uh, as a warrior, you have shed so many blood. The house, should, the house of God should, should be built in peace. Solomon means peace, peacemaker. And so uh, uh, that was symbolic for Solomon to build a house of prayer, a house of uh, praise is, uh, is also a house of peace. And so when Nathan corrected himself, that displayed his humility and he was submissive to the word of the Lord. He was, he, uh, he corrected himself, that is courage. You know, if we did something wrong, have the courage to correct it. Uh, if, you, if you said, if you hurt the feelings of your wife, of your uh, son and daughter, have the courage to say, I am sorry. Have the courage to say, please forgive me. Because uh, that is what the, the Bible is teaching. Have the God courage to correct yourself if you are wrong. Okay, moving on. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 to 13. This is the, uh, the most familiar part that Nathan was mentioned because uh, the, 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 the phrase, Thou art the man, is mentioned in the in second samuel chapter 12 anyway if you have your bibles please turn with me and follow me for our scripture reading for our scripture reading let us uh, use the niv version new international version bible and uh, my bible titled second corinthians chapter 12 Nathan rebukes David. Why, uh, why is it a courageous act? Because uh, Nathan was sent to rebuke a king. What happened? Let us read that. Verse 1, the Lord sent Nathan to David. When he came to him, he said, There are two men in a certain town, one rich and the other poor. Verse 2, the rich man uh, had very large number of sheep and cattle. The poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb he had bought. He raised it and it grew up with him and his children. It shared his food, drank from his cup, and even slept in his arms. It was like a daughter to him. Let us, uh, uh, you know, uh, let's move on. Uh, no, no, no. Let's go back to verse 3. The poor man, uh, you know, when, when I saw this, that the poor man bought a little ewe lamb and considered it as a daughter, I uh, remember 
uh, I was reminded of so many families now. They are buying dogs. They are buying dogs. And the dogs is sleeping in their bed. The wife is sleeping with the dog while the husband is there at the sala. <laughs> and you know, uh, uh, husband is a better, uh, uh, is a good, it's a better uh, bedmate. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, dogs smell uh, different. And there, uh, and so many people I have uh, don't, don't want to have a baby. They would rather uh, uh, have a dog. And they are calling their dogs babies. Baby dogs are not babies. Babies are dogs. They are animals. That is why when you enter the room, it smells like dog. Not the shampoo, not the conditioner, but it smells like dog. And others are kissing the dog. No, no, that is uh, harmful. Uh, that is why. Uh, I just want to, if you have uh, babies are better, uh, uh, are, are, are better, uh, it's better to enjoy babies, you know. I have a two-year-old uh, granddaughter. And uh, before they sleep, we will ask our, uh, our granddaughter, two-year-old, to pray for us, me and my wife. He will lay his hands in our forehead. And before, maybe uh, three or two months ago, when, he, when she prays, he will just open the lips. He will lay hands. No words. But uh, yesterday night, he prayed, Jesus, uh, pray, Lola, Lola, and then opening his, her mouth. Two years old. And then the father said, Ano sinabi mo? What did you say? Ano sinabi mo? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And so I am thankful that my two-year-old daughter is learning how to pray, to be thankful. Uh, dogs need to be vaccinated. You also buy diaper. They need to be walked outside of the room. It's harder actually to uh, to have a dog because uh, uh, dog food is expensive, uh, and so let us rethink our position of uh, of having a dog as a baby. No, dogs are pets. Anyway, I just want this is my uh, I this is just for me, but I am. Uh, uh, many are saying they cannot leave the house now, they cannot travel because no one will take care of the dogs. Now, it is the dog who is, who is being guarded by the people, not, uh, not uh, the dogs guarding the house. Uh, it was a, a change of uh, position. You cannot leave your house because no one will feed the dog. You cannot leave the house. No one will take care of the dog. And so uh, what are you going to do? You will bring the dog in the wedding or maybe in the mall? Well, uh, it is more uh, disturbing. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> it's just a personal call. Okay, moving on. Verse 4 of our scripture reading. Now a traveler came to the rich man, but the rich man refrained from taking one of his own ship or cattle to prepare a meal for the traveler who had come to him. Instead, he took the ewe lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it to the one who had come to him. Next, next verse, verse uh, 5. David burned with anger because the rich man took the ewe lamb, the only one considered as a, a daughter of the poor man. David burned with anger against the man 
and said to Nathan, As surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this must die. David pronounced the right judgment. The man who did this must die. Okay, next. What happened next? Verse 6. He must pay for the lamb four times over because he did such a thing and had no pity. Nathan said to David, you are the man that is the God's kind of courage. David, Nathan said to David, you are the man. This is what the Lord says. The God, a man filled with courage, will bring the revelation, the plan of the Lord, the message of the Lord. This is what the Lord says, the God of Israel says, I anointed you king over Israel. I delivered you from the hand of Saul. And then in verse 8, it says there in verse 8, I gave your master's house to you and your master's wives into your arms. I gave you all Israel and Judah. And if all this had been too little, I would have given you much more. Verse, uh, uh, verse, now go. verse 10. Why did you, verse 9, why did you despise the word of the Lord? You know, Nathan outlined the sin of David. David despised the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in his eyes. You struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword, took his wife to be your own. You killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Verse 10. Now therefore, the sword will never depart your house. As a man of courage, he outlined, he said, the consequences of sin, the punishment, the judgment. The sword will never depart from your house. Because you despised me and took the wife of Uriah, the Hittite to be your own. Verse 11, this is what the Lord says. Out of your own household, I am going to bring calamity on you. Sin brings calamity before your very eyes. I will take your wives and give them to the one who is close to you. He will sleep with your wives in broad daylight. And then verse 12, it says there in the next verse, uh, you did it in secret, but I will do this thing in broad daylight before all Israel. And verse 13, and David said to Nathan, I have seen against the Lord. Nathan replied, the Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die. The Lord will bless the reading and the study of his word. So uh, what are the lessons we can learn from uh, David, from Nathan and David? First, uh, in verse 1, going back to verse 1, the Lord, was, the Lord sent Nathan to David. What are the lessons there? When he came to uh, David, he was ready. He was ready. He heard the Lord first. He prayed how to rebuke. Uh, the Lord could have uh, mentioned, uh, why will I go to David in prayer? What I, am I going to say to David? What is your message to David? And uh, the Lord maybe said to, the, to Nathan, well, rebuke him for his murder. Rebuke him for the conspiracy. Rebuke him for taking, for committing adultery. And Lord, how am I going to tell it? Maybe, uh, maybe David, I will, uh, uh, David might be angry with me and put me to death. How am I going to say it? And so David displayed the God's kind of courage because he had the courage to obey. He had the courage to obey. He obeyed the Lord. 
and no, and uh, for uh, David to listen to him, uh, Nathan relayed a story about about a poor man and a rich man. You know, uh, uh, Jews like stories, just like Kenyans, just like Africans, and just like Filipinos. We like stories. Kaya ang daming nanonood ng telenovela. Mabiling mabili yung be careful with your heart. Si uh, si Chef uh, Ryan ba yun? Nung unang panahon eh, talagang uh, uh, yung uh, yung Marimar, sino inabot yun yung Marimar? Talagang uh, pag hindi mo napanood si Marimar, parang hindi ka Pilipino noong mga 19... Anong year yun, Joanne? Natatawa ka eh. Ano bang taon yun? Si Mari Mar. Oh, uh, napanood nyo ba yun? Si, pakitaas ng kamay. Sino nakaka-relate? Ayun, may mga nagtaas ng kamay. Di ba? Telo naman yun. Ang mga auso na. Yung mga Korea na eh. Hindi na Belenzuela telenovela. O kaya yung probinsyano. Meron pa bang nanunod? Hindi. Hanggang ngayon, hindi pa tapos yung probinsyano. Eh, patay na si Susan Rosses. May probinsyano pa. Anyway, uh, two weeks na lang yata, o one week na lang. Anyway, hindi pa ako nanonood niya, nababalitaan ko lang. <laughs> eh, ang kagandahan kay uh, Nathan, nagkwento siya. You know, uh, there are times if you want to tell the truth, uh, it's better to start with a story. So, uh, moving on. Okay, na Nathan had the courage to obey. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, David, Moses was not afraid to uh, obey. And uh, because others are afraid to obey because uh, they want to enjoy the pleasures of sin. They do not want to obey leaving their number two, number two, number three. They are committing adultery and they know it. They are unfaithful to their own wife and they know it and they continue to sin. Unlike Moses, Moses, verse 25 of Hebrews 11, chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Moses had the courage to obey God. And so uh, don't be afraid to obey God and especially the Ten Commandments. What is the uh, Sixth Commandment? Thou shall not uh, kill. The Seventh, thou shall not commit adultery. Thou shall not steal and so forth. Okay, moving on. Uh, verse 2. When, the, he, 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 uh, when he told the story about the rich man, and the poor man, they, Nathan was displaying courage to be different. He had the courage to be creative. Why? Because he prayed for it. Do, do not follow the crowd. Because if they are uh, living in sin, living in adultery, be different. Be a faithful husband. Be a faithful wife. If they are doing the same thing over and over again, well, they are not creative. You know, some people, they are, uh, do you, yung, yung turon, yung saba, na binabalot natin sa balat ng lumpia, binagawa nating turon. Yung iba, kapag nagturon, ay buong, uh, buong, uh, buong saba, nababalutin ng uh, balat ng lumpia, ipiprito, lalagyan ng asukal. Kaya ngayon, pagkakagatin, isang buong uh, saba ay halos napakalaki ang pagbubukas ng bibig kasi ang laki nung saba. Pwede nyo namang hatiin sa apat. Ako, inahati ko sa apat yung saba para bite size. Yung turon. Siguro pagdating ko dyan sa ano, magkakaroon akong demo na paggagawa ng turon na bite size. 
na atin sa apat para maliit lang, parang lumpiang Shanghai ang dating. Kasi pag malaki yung turon, ang laki ng pag, pagbuka ng bibig eh, eh, lalo na yung mga dalaga. Siyempre, mahihin yun eh. Pag bubukas yung bibig na napakalaki, napakahirap. So be creative. Yung iba pag nagsaing. Pagkahugas ng sinaing, ilalagay sa rice cooker, pipindutin agad. Hindi ho dapat pinipindut agad ang rice cooker. Let the water remain in the rice and cook for 10 to 15 minutes in the rice cooker. Just lay it down. After 15-20 minutes, put it on. At kapag naluto yung, uh, yung sinaing, walang bubbles sa takip. Pati ibabaw ng uh, kanin, luto. Yung iba, uh, hilaw yung ibabaw. Kasi paglagay agad ng rice cooker, pinipindot agad eh. Be creative. Be creative. And so many people, when you eat, they will put the rice cooker right in front of the table. Wala bang bandihado? Wala bang... Uh, para naman hindi diretsong nakalagay doon yung rice cooker, magandang uh, kumain na, na nasa pinggan. Anyway, be creative. Okay, moving on. Ako, mahaba na pala. Uh, okay, hatiin na lang natin ito. Ano ba nangyari? Rich man and the poor man. Yung dalawang senador natin ay good man. Sabi ni sino ba yung good, the good one? Si JB yata yun, i-hears ito. Ano ibig sabihin? Yung isang kapatid, the bad one? Or na, pag, mag, baka chismis yun. Baka maging, ma, uh, may mas, maging mema, may masabi lang. Baka maging marites ako. Wag na, wag na. So, the rich one and the poor one. The, witch, the rich one, very large number of sheep and cattle. The poor one, only one. Little you lamb. He bought it. Maybe the rich one, has inherited the large number of sheep and cattle, but this poor one bought the ewe lamb and he raised it like a daughter. Kasi uso naman ho ng panahon na yon na mag-alaga ng tupa. Uh, uh, in, in, in the desert, in uh, Israel, maybe also in Qatar, there are a lot of lamb, ewe lamb. And the poor people, they, uh, they just... Uh, They just uh, have one, one ewe lamb. Okay, moving on. What happened next? This rich one refrained from taking one of his own sheep and cattle. He took the ewe lamb that belonged to the poor man. What does that uh, rich one uh, display? He was selfish. He had a lot of cattle. He had a lot of sheep. And yet, why, why take the only one that the poor man has? He was so inconsiderate of the family, of the wife, or maybe the children of the poor man. He was happy, yes, but it was a big kind of happiness. He was happy because he was able to bring someone uh, a food for the traveler. He was happy, but the poor one You know, the poor one was just silent. It was harassment on the part of the poor man because the rich one has authority, maybe. The poor man was exploited. His right was violated. He was angry, but he cannot do anything. Why? He was a poor one. He was a poor man. And so it is wrong to take advantage of the poor. And we are thankful that Qatar is welcoming Kenyans, the welcoming Filipinos, welcoming Ghana, uh, people from Ghana to work in Qatar. Because we are thankful that Filipinos are, giving, uh, are given the chance to work in the state of Qatar in order for us to move out of poverty. And so we are, uh, that is why I am thankful Every day, when we pray, have our prayer meeting, closing prayer, we pray for the state of Qatar so that employment will continue. Okay, moving on. David burned with anger against the man. May David pronounce righteous judgment. 
the, the man who did this must die. The man must pay the lamb four times. The judgment was right. That man had no pity. And so when Nathan said, you are the man, he displayed the courage to confront. The courage to confront lying, adultery, murder, and Nathan had the courage to be truthful. Brothers and sisters, if you want uh, to have courage, have the courage to be truthful. Tell the truth to your neighbor. Do not lie. That is what Nathan is saying. The, I am ready on the next uh, slide. Uh, David had the courage to be truthful and had the courage to confront. Nathan, uh, Nathan rather, Nathan never tolerated the murder of Uriah. He never tolerated the adulterous uh, relationship with Bathsheba. Anyway, moving on, David, the kind, the God's kind of, uh, 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 Nathan, the God's kind of courage. You know, Nathan, what Nathan did? He, uh, he said to David what the Lord did. At times, you need to review what God is doing in our lives. Maybe because of the success, uh, David considered victory uh, for himself. He was full of pride. But, you know, it was David. It was God who did, who did it all. I anointed you king over Israel. I delivered you from the hand of King Saul. I, I, I gave your master's house to you, your master's wives into your arms. I gave you all Israel and Judah. Whatever success, that is the lesson. Whatever success we may have, it is all because of God. It is all because of God. And if all oh, this had been too little, this is what I like. If this had been too little, I would have given you even more. Kung ito'y kulang, kung kulang pa ito, bibigyan pa sana kita ng mas marami pa diyan. Ibig sabihin, kung kulang pa yung kayamanan, ready ibigay ng Lord. Kung kulang pa yung tagumpay, ready ibigay ng Lord. I gave your master's house and your wives and the kingdom of Israel and Judah. If if that had not been enough, I would have given you much, much more. Wow. God is ready to bless us. But you, we need to do it the right way. In closing, what is the sin of David? He despised the word of the Lord. You did what is evil in the sight of God. What is the lesson? Walang kasalanan na natatago sa Diyos. No sin can be hidden before God. Nung ma-expose ang pagbibigay ng personal loan uh, sa state of Qatar, it was, uh, it was, uh, it, it was an, a, a practice that the church cannot tolerate. No sin, stealing cannot be hidden before God. Lack of submission cannot be hidden before God. Not reporting uh, the tithes and offering of the church cannot be hidden from God. And so no sin can be hidden before the Lord. What is the next uh, lesson there? Okay, moving on. Uh, the sword, that is the judgment. The consequences of sin. The soul will never depart from your house. I am going to bring calamity on you. I will take your wives and give them to the one who is close to you. Sin brings humiliation and shame. That is why sin should not be tolerated. We need to have the courage to confront sin. Because sin brings humiliation and shame. And what David did is so beautiful because David now had the courage to confess. It was Nathan. 
is with it was not only Nathan who displayed the God's kind of courage. David, when he was confronted, when David was exposed because of prophet Nathan, praise God, David responded the right way. David had the courage to confess. Hallelujah. David had the courage to repent. I have sinned against God. David had the courage not to hide his sins. You know, when Bathsheba said, I am pregnant, he tried to, uh, to hide it because he killed Uriah. David had the courage not to make excuses. Hallelujah. This is the courage God wants. If you have seen, it is wrong to hide it, confess it, and repent from your sin. Do not try to uh, make excuses. Be honest before your God. Look at what David confessed. He wrote his confession in Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion. Blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. That is what David said. My guilt, my sin. Verse 3, for I recognize my rebellion. God is not joking. J.I.L. is not on a game. This ministry is serious. David said, I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. This message is a warning for those who are lying before God, who are lying to their wives, who are lying to their husband, who are lying to their parents. You know what David said? Against you and you alone have I seen. I have done what is evil in your sight. Hallelujah. David made himself responsible for his sin. Those who left J.I.L. and formed their own group, they don't want to take the responsibility of stealing from the church funds. That is why, uh, praise God, J.I.L. is now recovering. Many already have been promoted. Many are healed. Many are uh, have a new job. Congratulations for those who have new job. Why? Because you embrace the truth. Because you never tolerated sin. And this November, we will meet personally. I we can eat together, have lunch together, have dinner together have uh, meetings together, have our training, because I am thankful many JIL stayed with the truth, with the ministry. Palapagan po natin ang Diyos na buhay. Hallelujah. In closing, David said, when David had the courage to confess, when David had the courage to repent, when David had the courage to ask forgiveness from the Lord, what did Nathan reply to David? The Lord has taken away your sin. Hallelujah. You are not going to die. Nathan, Nathan had the courage to forgive. And Nathan had the courage to give David another chance. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, we are thankful that... Uh, David did the right thing by confessing. David did the right thing uh, for uh, repenting of his sin. And eventually, David won the heart of God. And uh, Acts 13 says, I have found David, the man after the heart of God, 
who is willing to do everything I told him to do. Hallelujah. This is now the concluding verse of my message. The last slide that we have, we have is written in Psalm 86, verse 5. Because having the courage uh, to honor, David honored Nathan by putting uh, naming his sons Nathan. But it was written in Psalm 86, verse 5. The last slide that we have, let us read it. Read this together. Those who are online, those who are in uh, attending the house of praise, house of power, and house of prayer, let us read this together. One, two, three. Oh Lord, you are so good, so ready to forgive, so full of unfailing love for all who ask for your help. Praise God. The good news today. God is a good God. Amen. The good news today. God is ready to forgive. Hallelujah. The good news today. God is full of unfailing love. The good news today. Those who will ask for help. God will help. Oh, those who in need of help. God will help. God, those who are in need of healing, God will heal. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let us pray together. Hallelujah. Tayo po ay sama-samang manalangin. Father God, we thank you for the life of Nathan because Nathan had the courage to embrace the truth. Nathan had the courage to obey God and the message of the Lord. Nathan had the courage to con confront sin, had the courage not to tolerate sin. And I thank you, Lord, for those who have attended our service in person and online. Lord, we thank you. Those who are listening to your servant are those who love the truth because we are studying the Word of God filled with truth and revelation from, from the Lord. Father God, you said it. Lord, you are so good and you are ready to forgive. Lord, honestly, we have failed you so many times. We have sinned repeatedly. And so many times, Lord, we fall into sin. Right now, Father God, Listen to the confession of your people. Shall we uh, repeat this prayer? Shall we say, Heavenly Father, please forgive me from all my sins. Forgive me from lying. Forgive me from uh, being unfaithful. And Lord, as you forgive my sin, Cleanse me, cleanse me from all my sin. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my healer in the name of Jesus. Lord, because of your forgiveness, I can now enjoy your presence and I can even enjoy the prosperity that you want us to experience just like David who was given another chance. And thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your forgiveness. And thank you for my family. In the name of Jesus, we pray. pray. Father God, lay your hands upon each one. Whatever pain, whatever sickness, whatever disease that your people had in the state of Qatar, in the Philippines, in Kenya or maybe in Africa, maybe in all other parts of the world, wherever, Lord, the loved ones of your people are, uh, are living, Lord, extend your healing hands. Extend your hands upon them and touch, uh, touch their bodies, remove the pain, and let there be healing, let there be miracles, and Father God, I pray for each one 
Help us, give us the courage to embrace the truth. Give us the courage not to make excuses. Give us the courage to obey you. And help us always to enjoy life. Because life is meant to be lived with peace. And I thank you, Lord, that David, just like the rest of us, are free from guilt, are now free from shame. You will uh, remove the shame and restore respect. You will remove the sickness and you will bring the healing. You will remove the poverty and bring in the prosperity for your people. You said it in Psalm 128, verse 2. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Release the blessing and there's prosperity, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Palakpakan po natin ang ating Diyos sa buhay. Uh, ganda tayo. Mali ng mas masayang awit para sa Panginoon. Praise God. Praise God.